Hi everyone and welcome to this edition of Ohio Update. I'm Tom Bosco. You know, it seems like it happens every time the gas gauge in your car starts dipping toward E. Your anxiety level over the price of gas starts going up. Today we're going to take a look at three ways that researchers at Ohio University's Rust College of Engineering and Technology are searching for solutions. Graduate student Christopher Gregg and his advisor, Greg Kremer, are working on a test vehicle that other researchers can use to study alternative fuels. We're trying to create a universal platform uh, for energy testing so any alternative energy source can be used to uh, be used to power the vehicle. This system itself is general enough that we can test other other components, other uh, hybrid vehicles. Any idea that anybody has of producing electricity in a mobile platform, basically that will have a, a space for them on the car so that uh, if you have an idea of uh, running on grape juice and converting that to electricity, we'll see how, how long you can go before you run out. We really think that the future is plug-in electric hybrid vehicles which would maybe use a diesel engine uh, powered by biofuels. If we could get all that into this package eventually, that would be, it would be wonderful to be able to test all those things. One of the most promising ideas for a new source of fuel comes from the lab of chemical engineering professor Geraldine Botte. She found a way to convert ammonia into energy. Now her idea is headed for development in the marketplace. We chose to extract hydrogen from ammonia because ammonia represents an effective, safe, and environmental friendly way to transport hydrogen. For a hydrogen economy to exist, analysts and economists say that hydrogen has to be produced cleanly, which means a non-polluting process uh, efficiently and cost-effectively. Ammonia is cheaper than other fuels and ammonia can also be, a, it is a biofuel that is, that is already available in wastewater. Therefore, we could produce energy from waste. In August, Dr. Botte's research was licensed by American Resources Security Corporation in one of the most exciting partnerships to happen at Ohio University in years. Quite frankly, we're very excited about playing a very important role in the future of what I consider to be this country, in making it capable of standing on its own two legs in terms of energy. Another energy source researchers are developing not only doesn't pollute the environment, it cleans it. Environmental engineering professor Ben Stewart is growing blue-green algae on fabric that can be placed in smokestacks to absorb carbon dioxide. When the algae is done cleaning the air, it can be turned into biodiesel fuel. Here's how it works. Generally what we have here is a system that pretends to make flue gases where we use a burner and natural gas to create carbon dioxide, so we have a flame in the bottom, and then a fan which recirculates those flue gases throughout the unit. The light acts as the solar source, uh, photon source, so that the algae can consume the carbon dioxide and then the gas that leaves the reactor is um, much cleaner in terms of lower carbon dioxide. What we do is disrupt all the cell membranes and extract what's on the inside of the cells. In this case, what we're trying to extract is oil. That oil that we get from the algae then can be utilized as a replacement for diesel fuel. Going green means more than just filling up your car's gas tank with clean, renewable fuel. It takes a commitment, and Ohio University is leading the way. In fact, here at the new Baker University Center, the university will soon be composting more than three tons of waste a day. Ohio recently got a grant for a quarter million dollar composting system. It'll be the first at a university. Look for that in 2008. Ohio students take part in Recycle Mania each year, a national competition that Ohio University co-founded. Students work to reduce greenhouse emissions and recycle used materials. Since 2005, a group of students has been living in the Ohio University Eco House. Students rely on solar energy, grow their own food, and compost their waste. It's all an effort to promote a sustainable, energy-smart lifestyle. And Ohio University's President Roderick McDavis signed the President's Commitment to Climate Change. That's an agreement between university presidents to actively reduce their school's greenhouse emissions. So you can see, whether it's in research or in practice, the green and white of Ohio University are truly going green. Thanks for watching this edition of Ohio Update. Until next time, make sure you check out our website. It's ohio.edu. For Ohio Update, I'm Tom Bosco.